So, John, let's get this thing going. Uh, tell me how uh, this film came to be in the run-up of movies in your aurore, or however you say it. Yeah. Uh, this one kind of sticks out. So tell me how this one came to be. Yeah, luckily, th there was one subject I was obsessed by that didn't scare people, kind of. And <laughs> so there was a show on, that came on in Baltimore called The Buddy Dean Show. We never got American Bandstand ever. And it was a dance show, and it was on television six days a week, sometimes five hours a day. So these kids were stars in Baltimore. They had hair higher. The boys' pants were tighter. You know, it was more extreme. And so I watched it every day, but it eventually went off the air because it wouldn't integrate. And they actually did have Negro Day, where black kids came on with Fat Daddy, the greatest DJ in Baltimore. Was every Thursday, right? No, it was once a month or every two months. It so, wasn't that good. So right? we'll, we'll get to that. Yeah. So uh, I thought it would be a good kind of melodrama in a way. And also I wanted the girl that was the star of the show to be a big girl because there was never a girl in the Buddy Dean show that was fat, ever, ever, ever. So, uh, and it turned out to be a Trojan horse, this movie, that snuck in middle America with all my ideas and nobody, even racists like Hairspray. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in some ways, this is a black ass film, uh, in, in some well, ways. It's when I saw you, I was like, there's another black guy in Hairspray? <laughs> Who were you? <laughs> But you know, one review of it that was kind of critical said it's a black history film from a white man's viewpoint. It is, definitely. I was Tracy. You know, we used to go down to the black neighborhood and, and the cops, the black cops hated it just as much as the white cops. And they used to stop us because it was straight and gay, rich and poor, white and black teenagers hanging together. All the cops hated us, both sides. And they used to say, this isn't Greenwich Village, you know. And, and when I knew it was really, when I saw it all come to life, is we all got arrested at the drive-in once for underage drinking. And in the courtroom, all the white kids' parents came down and got them out, and the black kids did not. Uh. They couldn't get them out. So, you know, that kind of thing. What and Governor Wallace was running for president in, in Maryland at the time. So the first protest marches and everything we went to in high school, really. And it was really scary. I mean, then you went and people, sh you know, it was riots and stuff. So um, it was all true. I was Tracy in a weird way. You know, I, I wanted to, to talk about that because I saw this film as a kid, probably too young, because uh, people in my family would watch it. And I'd be like, what the hell are y'all watching? I'm watching Hairspray, and I could never figure out why until people started dancing, and then I got it, you know? Everybody loved the rhythm in the film. But then I saw it again as an undergrad, and a professor was explaining that there were different, different modes of radicalism. And the films in your early work are very radical. You know, they're, they're aggressive, as you said. Pink Flamingos is not hairspray. Uh, and yet, the, the verve, the energy is all the same. And I think the issues you're dealing with in this movie, um, they reach a much wider audience than the issues in some of those other films. So was that a conscious choice when you no. were? No. When we got a PG rating, I've said this before, I always thought, I'll never work again, really. <laughs> and, and I worked very much with New Line Cinema, and, uh, and I think some of, not Sarah Risher, who was the producer that really helped me on this movie, she's here tonight, too. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, but some of the people at New Line wanted me to put in the word shit so I'd get a PG-13. I said, no, this is what's shocking that it's a PG. It's the, and, and Divine got the best reviews of his life because he was playing against type, which was this monster we made up to scare hippies. You know, people think Divine was trans. He didn't want to be a woman. He wanted to be Godzilla. You know, so, so uh, I, I never at the time thought it was, I had written a more commercial movie or anything, you know, it, it surprised me completely when, and, but then it, it did work and, and, and I certainly embraced that fact. You know, I always wanted to be commercial. Are you kidding? I was surprised all of them didn't make money. <laughs> I was the only one that was surprised. Yeah. 